Starting at the age of six, Rochelle Farrell has become a household name for jazz and R&B for over 20 years. Born and raised in Philadelphia, Farrell has taken her talents to a level that other artists are striving to reach. Performing with the likes of Quincy Jones, Anita Baker, Kim, George Benson, Will Downing, and George Duke. Rochelle Farrell's six-octave voice has captured millions of fans around the world. Oh, come on now. First of all, I have to say, I am extremely excited to have you here. Thank Detroit you. is excited to have you Thank here. you. I'm excited to be here. I understand you received an award recently. Would you like to tell me a little bit about it? Uh, if I do, I'll start crying. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, but I got to get a little bit of it. <laughs> it was an amazing presentation, um, which served to, to sum and, and, and verify the love affair that we've been sharing for many, many years since since 1992, which is the first time I came here. And to see it uh, come to me and to be able to receive it from the beaming faces and souls and hearts of all the beautiful people here just served to send me to the moon, literally. Um, and the excitement and the enthusiasm, all of this is music. And it's just resonating through my body now and I might start singing at any moment. Well, I tell you, it would be an honor if you did. <laughs> but I understand that you, having such a connection with your music, mm -hmm. you are able to speak in ways that people can't find words to speak through your song. So you've done that for so many years, mm -hmm. and I myself have used your songs in instances Ooh. in relationships when I couldn't express the right words through love. And Thank I know you. how important that is to yes. you. So why don't Thank you talk you. about that just a little bit? Your connection with your music, you're an arranger, a vocalist, a lyricist. I mean, you have your hands in everything. The task that it takes and the emotion that it takes to build <laughs> great songs that you have. It's a passion. Yeah. By being, um, being about the, the composition first. Because the song, once the song it has been created, or I think I consider myself to be a midwife to, to music and song. And so when that song comes through, it comes through from God as far as I'm concerned. No, because, you know, no one can create like that. No. Except God. And so it's an honor and a privilege, and I consider it sacred to be able to be in a space where I can align myself in such a way that, that uh, he, she can gift me and send this song, this composition through me to the physical world. So I become a conduit or a channel from the non-physical, from the spirit world into the physical world. It's like giving birth, so to speak. And so in that, it's such a profound privilege and responsibility that I have to stay true to myself and my principles and all of the gifts that he's given me in order to stay true to the song, the composition. And once that composition has, has come to fruition and been made manifest, then I have to stay true to it enough to, and the, to the whole of it, enough to, to execute it and sing it in a way that it touches the place that God wants to be touched. You know, that's why the song was given to me. And so it's a, a combination of, you know, maintaining this perfect alignment, which is not easy. Mm. Um, but you know, the, you gotta do the dishes and the laundry and bills have to be paid and sometimes you, you're late and <laughs> for appointments and right. some things happen that, you know, get in the way of this perfect alignment. Mm -hmm. But the ideal is to um, know, acknowledge, and recognize the alignment and constantly strive for it. And you all do it yourselves in different ways with, with your gifts, your respective gifts, and the way that you work and your passions in life. My way is just through music. In 1992, Pharrell's self-entitled album launched her into superstar status with a steamy duet with Will Downing entitled, Nothing Has Ever Felt Like This. Along with other songs like With Open Arms, Welcome to My Love, and Till You Come Back to Me.
Pharrell has captured the hearts of fans across the world. I know you're doing this in such a way that it affects lives and has affected lives, still is affecting lives. I look forward to following your journey. Thank you. As it helps to build my own. Ooh, thank you. But I have to tell you, I cannot remember a time in my past few years, I won't put a date on it. Okay, all right. <laughs> that gave me the opportunity to associate my life experience mm -hmm. with what it is that you have released uh -huh. in your music. Do you have mm. personal experiences in every song that you put out, or is it just something that you just I do. feel? You do. In some way, shape, or form. Okay. Even if it's no more than um, the connection I have to the person who actually had the experience, mm -hmm. if I'm talking about um, someone who had an experience that I didn't have, but I'm the the um, the observer, mm. and and by extension participating in it in some way, even if it's no more than to hold their hand or or just to acknowledge, yes, I see that you you've experienced that, and to write about it. So everything that I write is from personal experience in some way, shape, or form, and helps to uh, first clarify the experience in my own life and make sense of it. Because sometimes it's like, whoa. What's going on here? And right. the, I found I have found that the easiest way for me to understand uh, anything in life that I experience is to get inside of it through the process of songwriting and composition, and just exploring it musically. And sometimes it, it goes to a place where words are no longer necessary, and it goes straight directly to the soul. And so we don't have to argue about the semantics of the definition of a word. Right. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Or what you said was, you know, such and such and such and such, but what you really meant, no. If I said, Okay. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Yes. yes it absolutely. goes beyond, you know, the mechanisms that we as human beings um, utilize to, to, you know, to live our lives, sometimes you need to go directly to the source right. and bypass all of the, the cables and the cameras and the tripods and stuff and go to the source. And it allows us access to that. And I'm just grateful to be a part of it. With the ability to bring old school vocals to a new school sound, Rochelle Farrell continues to wow audiences. <laughs> Having had your hands in a lot of projects outside of yourself, mm -hmm. you've worked with many greats. The list honored. goes on for days. Is there a dream that was my education. <laughs> well, speaking of education, <laughs> Winfrey Marcellus, mm -hmm. you were, I mean, you had so many people coming out of Berkeley mm -hmm. music that mm -hmm. you attended with mm -hmm. that are jazz greats. Yeah. And I, because of your unique sound, I don't like to label you to a genre. I think you, you. embody Thank your you. own sound. Thank you. You have your own I've been voice. working years for that. Yeah. You know, and paid a very high price for it, but it's very necessary because, um, one, it shows um, and examples for, for those coming after me, as well as my contemporaries, that you don't have to be a conformist to be acceptable and to be um, uh, a contributor to the times and to society. You can do it in, under your own, your own terms and in your own way. And two, um, it allows me to uh, express the deepest and the highest parts of myself, my God self. And sometimes, you know, God doesn't want to be put in a box. Absolutely. <laughs> He's not that kind of guy. Well, and he's so infinitely creative that, that he doesn't ever have to do anything the same way. Okay. So. Well, we have to thank Council President Jones for honoring you today, for her presence here in the studio today. I mean, but for you visiting with them, but I have had the, um, the honor and the privilege to speak with you. If there was any one artist today mm -hmm. that captured your attention as You've captured many of ours. Mm, thank you. Would you be able to tell me who that is? Today? Uh, I can't call any one particular artist um, in, you know, up out of the archives. Okay. <laughs> of the many, there are so many out there that are doing so many different unique things and making a beautiful contribution to the tapestry mm. that is, uh, that predates me. 
because we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. Maya Angelou. Yes, for sure. And there are many of us who, you know, who are doing what we do nowadays. We have no idea that, that there are those before us who couldn't even walk into a building like this, mm -hmm. who couldn't even hold the positions that we hold as council president and, and, and you know, sit in front of a camera and speak. We had to um, be hidden and, and be relegated to the, the lower echelons of society. We have um, a great deal to be thankful for, uh, for those pioneers who kind of walk these same pathways, these same streets, but under very different circumstances than we do and that we enjoy now. And I'm, I just want to acknowledge them and, and say thank you to the ancestors, both, both musical and otherwise, that you know paved the way for us to be here right now and doing what we do and the way that we do it. Rochelle Farrell, a sound like no other. And to uh, Montez and Miss Jones, I want to say thank you. Pioneers, pioneers, pioneers. Pioneers, keep keep moving, keep keep moving, keep keep moving, keep Pioneers. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that was to say. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. They say good things come in small packages. When you think of five-year-old Leah Jeffries, this definitely applies to her. When she was called to the set of the new highly rated Fox series Empire in 2014, little Leah didn't know what to expect, but guess what? The cast of Empire didn't know what they were getting into. A pint-sized bundle of beauty, full of grace, innocence, and personality. We have the honor today of being with and one of Empire's beautiful stars, Miss Leah Jeffries and her mother, the gorgeous, gorgeous mother of this gorgeous, gorgeous little girl. I understand you all were upstairs today yes. in council receiving awards. Yes. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? You want to talk about your pen? My pen, she gave it to me um, because they said this saw me, I'm on the Empire, and they told me all on the news, and they said they loved it, and, and that's why I got this award. That's a huge honor to receive an award like that. And there are many people in Detroit who love Empire and love you. You're the sweetest thing. Mom, why don't you tell us how she embarked upon the career of acting? I understand you're in a household of models. I mean, that's not a lot of pressure, right? <laughs> no, no. no, actually, uh, we started because her brother started off with doing commercials and different. Uh, he's been doing commercials probably since he's about four. Okay. And then once Leah was born, I just I could tell she would always, you know, watch television all the time, and she just really took upon herself to just tell me. She actually told me herself that she wanted to be on television. Really? So I just continued to just watch her. I would constantly just watch her as a parent, you know. And once I saw something in her, I said, you know what, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, you know, sign her also. So once I started with her, she started getting a lot of different roles and then she did the Carol's Daughter Ambassador. And oh, wow. they're really, and they actually contacted me. Oh, did through, they? Through social media about her and her hair for natural hair. And also for uh, Empire, she didn't even audition. They contacted, you know, I got a call that day. They told me that they liked her look and they just wanted to know if she could read the lines. And mm -hmm. since she was able to read the lines, I took her to the studio and within an hour, they told me that she got the part. And she was supposed to only do like one or two scenes. And mm -hmm. once they got there and they liked her personality, they just continued to write her in. Leah has captured the hearts of many across the country with her priceless smile. From her first scene on Empire, little Leah was destined for big things. Hey, Jamal. What's up, Olivia? What you doing here? We heard you on the radio. Your song, they will not stop playing it, and Lola knows all the words. Sing a song. Um, da, 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 um. Da, 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 da
how does it feel to be on a set of Empire with all those famous people? Good. Who is your favorite? I can. Really? Is he fun to play with? I can imagine. How is school? I mean, do your friends at school talk about you being on the show at all? What do they say? They said they always wanted and they keep on watching me over and over. Oh, yeah? When you all play, do you like playing uh, with particular toys? I understand you're a big Barbie fan. What's your favorite Barbie? The Barbie with the ice skates on. Oh, speaking of ice skates, isn't that kind of like Frozen? Do you like Frozen? I love Frozen. I heard you singing the Frozen song earlier. You want to sing a little bit of it? Go ahead. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. To waste in the dark. Everywhere she goes, Leah brings out the child within all of us by her smile. You want me to sing you a song my dad used to sing to me? Yes. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Near the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. And you go, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away. A whim away, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away, a whim away. Keep going. In the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. Near the village, the quiet village, the lion sleeps tonight. Do you have any expectations for her to go beyond television? I mean, she's so personable and she's such a cutie pie. I mean, you know, big screen, that would yes. be the next stage, wouldn't yes, it? Yes, I'm thinking about that. And also, uh, her agent also mentioned theater. Oh, wow. About the Broadway, some Broadway plays and theater. And maybe she wants to go to, like, Nickelodeon, Disney. So someone I'll probably end up taking her out to, for pilot season to L.A. She's gotten several calls to come out that way. So. Really? We were just trying to stay within this area because there's a lot of opportunities still here in Chicago. A lot of people don't know, but there's a lot of shows between here and Chicago. Oh, wow. Different series. Okay. So, yeah, so her agent advised that right now there's still a lot going on. If you're shooting in Chicago, that's where Empire is. That's where Empire is yes. shot. So, Leah, what would be your most favoritest character in the whole wide world to play? If you could pick anything that you could be on TV, who would it be or what would it be? Tell her who. Um, who? Ew. What do you play on TV? What's your favorite? What, um, what, what SpongeBob. I like SpongeBob, too. What the heck? I didn't know you watched Spongebob. What do you like about Spongebob? He's funny. Oh, yeah? And Patrick. Oh, yeah? And Sandy Cheeks. Yes. And, and Mr. Krabs and, and all the people and Squidward. Squidward kind of crabby, isn't he? Yeah, he needs a vacation. He don't like Spongebob or <laughs> Patrick or Mr. Krab. So what do you think um, if you had advice for parents? who wanted to have their children in the realm of acting. I know it can be very competitive and difficult at times, but what would you say to them to prepare them for a superstar like this? Um, you know, I would say actually just watch your children and look and notice what are their skills and what do you see. I have, um, between my two kids, I can really, I know between which one is their strength in mm -hmm. each child. Okay. So I work with them. Um, never give up to me because it was just a blessing that the opportunity presented itself. You know, a lot of people like to say, oh, I didn't know that actors were coming out of Detroit. I thought the same exact thing. Okay. So many times I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that this happened because you would think you had to be in Hollywood or California or New York. But I will honestly say if that's what your child would like to do, just watch it and make sure you get good photos and send them in and just let them be natural. That's the most thing of all is that they want them to be natural. Okay. Yeah. Well, Miss Leah? Do you have anything else you want to say to us today? Thank you, Detroit. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet you. Can I have a hug? Is that okay? Okay. Thank you. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs>